I'm Mike Goudsward, the instructional designer for ENVX. I was recently in Melbourne, Australia, and had the opportunity to interview Phil Connors, a faculty member from Deakin University. We discussed human population and resource use. Like the United States, Australia is a developed country, but many of its neighbors are developing nations. Here's our conversation. Well, that's a really interesting question because carrying capacity of the earth depends on the resources that people are using. So, for instance, if everybody used the same resources that we used in Australia, that we use in Australia per head of capita, then we are it would be like t probably two and a half to three to three earths that we would require to do to use those resources. And so, for me, it's more of a sociological understanding about. <sighs> what is it about people and the use of resources. So depending on how we look at it, there could be different populations depending on how much, how many resources we're using. I know, for instance, as a global population, we're using what something like 1.7 Earths at the, at the rate we're going at the moment, something along those lines. But um, there's a probably less than a quarter of the global population is probably using three quarters of those resources. So for me, it's a case of not so much having a set number of people but it's how how those resources are utilized and how those resources are distributed between the population that we've got. I personally I think we probably are. Uh, there seems to be a slowing in population growth all the you know and from what I can gather, there seems it seems that within it's going to peak out about nine billion or nine and a half billion or somewhere around there, and then start to fall away. And you've got a lot of societies, for instance, Japan, Australia, probably the US, where you've got large ageing populations. Um, although in developing countries, you've got a lot of uh, or countries of the south, you've got. Uh, very young populations. So that's, but again, it comes back to that resource use. Um, and if we, if we, for me, it also comes back to that notion of about our economic system. If we continue with a growth based economic system, then it's not going to be sustainable even if we had half the number of people on the planet. If it's a continual growth rate, then we're going to constantly be using resources unless we can, you know, and science has been very good at being able to utilise less to, to provide more resources, but that's uh, you know that can't continue. There's going there's been a decreasing rate in the way in the rate that science can assist in that process. So we've got to have that decoupling of resource use from an economic what's considered economic growth, and so we need to look at all of those different sorts of systems. And I would be loath to put a carrying capacity figure on on something because I think. If we start to look at a figure then, and we don't look at those other issues, then it's not going to help us much at all unless we start to change the way that, we, that our whole economic system and that our whole social structures are, are developed. I suppose for me it's about Using, resource, use, using resources at a rate at which they can be replaced by natural processes and not producing or only producing waste that can be reabsorbed by natural processes. So it, which the way um, certainly G20 societies are going at the moment is, is not sustainable at all. Um, so yeah, so I look at it more along those lines. Interestingly, in my research with them, there's been no indigenous communities that have actually taken them up. Probably because they don't need to, because they've learnt, say, certainly in Australia, uh, uh, indigenous populations are, are probably far better able to understand what sustainability is and have a better understanding about that. So it's interesting to see where these things are picked up and who is using them and what information is being brought out about them. So, but those sorts of alternative understandings and can be very useful at raising people's awareness 
My other concern about that sort of thing is how much are they talking to the converted? You know, those people who already have a good understanding about sustainability and about lower resource use and, and so forth have a smaller footprint on the planet rather than engage, how much can they engage with, with, uh, with those that may not be in that, in that space already? So for me, it's also about a cosmopolitan understanding is how do you link communities up in, in one country with those in another different context and get them to talk across that difference and, and look at what those issues around sustainability, what's meaningful in one place may be quite different in another. How do we understand that? Phil, thank you so much from everyone at Dartmouth and for the students of our introduction to environmental science.